Ever wondered why your computer slows down when you're multitasking or running heavy applications? The secret lies in your motherboard's bus slots and expansion cards. Whether you're adding a graphics card, sound card, or extra USB ports, understanding how bus slots work is key to boosting your PC's performance. In this video, I'll break down everything you need to know about PCI, PCI Express, and other bus slots, what they do, how to use them, and which ones are right for your build. Ready to upgrade your PC like a pro? Let's dive in! Computer Bus Slot As we saw in the previous course, the connection between the north and south chipsets of the motherboard is made using channels called buses. A bus is simply a set of channels that allows data and signals to travel between the components of the motherboard. The motherboard contains several types of buses with different bandwidth speeds. For example, a bus speed of 66 MHz means that data travels at 66 million cycles per second. The higher the bus speed, the better the computer will perform because it will be able to send data faster. When we talk about the bus speed of a motherboard, it basically refers to the speed of the front bus. The FSB is the connection between the CPU and the north chipset. Hyperthreading. Before moving on to the bus locations, we will quickly talk about hyperthreading. It is a technology developed by Intel that increases the performance of CPU cores. CPU resources are used more efficiently, allowing multiple processing queues to run on each of the cores. This means that the processor can perform more tasks in the same amount of time. So, basically, you can run many applications at the same time and still maintain your computer's performance when you have a hyper-threaded processor. In other words, your computer won't slow down. Now, let's get back to our computer bus slot. All motherboards are equipped with slots. Input bus and output. These are usually located at the bottom back of the motherboard. They are also called expansion slots because these slots are used to expand the computer's capabilities. For example, if the motherboard doesn't have a built-in sound card, well, you can add a sound card by inserting it into one of these PCI slots. This gives your computer the ability to produce sound. Let's take another example. Imagine that your motherboard doesn't have enough USB port. Well, you can also add a USB expansion card in one of the bus sets provided for this purpose. Today, the most common types of buses are PCI, Peripheral Component Interconnect Ports. The term PCI literally stands for Interconnect Peripheral Components. It's been around since 1993, and it was a standard bus slot for modern motherboards until the release of PCI Express, which we talk about right after. The PCI slots are much faster than its predecessor, which were the older ISA slots. The PCI ports have a 32-bit or 64-bit data path and provide speeds ranging from 133 to 533 megabytes per second, and their widths is about half that of an ISA port, PCI Express. Now, let's move on to the PCI Express port, which is the latest version of bus slots. It is, of course, faster than its predecessor, with speeds of up to 4 gigabytes per second. Unlike standard PCI, which transfers data in parallel, PCI Express transfers data serially. This is much faster than in parallel because the serial data is transferred in packets. The PCI Express was therefore designed to succeed all other PCI bus slots and even the old AGP port. On the other hand, PCI Express is not compatible with standard PCI because the architecture is completely different. There are four different slot sizes in PCI Express. There are PCI Express X1, which contains a single lane for data. We have PCI Express X4, which includes four lanes. 
O2 wires are for shipping, O and the other two for the reception. Then we have the PCI Express X8, which contains eight lanes. And the fastest is the PCI Express in X16, with 16 lanes. It is the successor to the AGP port for the video card. Now we're going to move on to the PCI X port, where the X means it's extended. The PCI X slot is essentially an extension of the old PCI port, and it is almost twice as long. PCI X travels on a 64 bit bus, and it's even compatible with the standard PCI port. It was primarily designed to work with high speed servers and computers. Before we finish the course, we're going to talk about the mini PCI port, which is used mainly on laptops. It is much smaller than a standard PCI. The mini PCI is 32-bit and travels in a 33 megahertz bus. Front panel connector. On the motherboard, usually located in the bottom right corner, there is what is called the front panel connector. This is where you plug in the wires that connect to the front panel of the computer case. It includes a power connector. This is what gives the command to turn the computer on or off. There is the power LED connector, which indicates when the computer is on or off, or even in sleep mode. There is also the hard drive one, which indicates when there is activity on the hard drive. We have the reset connector, which allows you to restart the computer. And there is also a speaker connector, which is used to plug in the internal speaker of the computer, the one that will beep. Typically, the front panel connector is color-coded to help you more easily identify where the wires connect. This type of connector allows easy access to these functions directly on the computer case. This avoids fiddling with the PC to, for example, turn it off. It includes some USB ports, audio ports, one for headphones or speakers, and another for a microphone. We have the power button, which is used to turn the computer on or off. There is a reset button, which is used to perform a hard reboot. And then there's the hard drive activity light. When that light flashes, it means there's activity in the computer. In other words, the hard drive is being used. 